Welcome. I'm your host, Dustin. I'm also Dustin. And we have a special guest today. <laughs> oh, we got I'm Brad. I'm not Dustin. <laughs> I'm not we got Dustin. three Dustins. No, just kidding. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got an old man, Brad. How are you doing, Brad? You doing good, man? I, I am doing very, very well. I gotta sit down. I gotta talk some horror movies with you guys. So, what's what's uh what's better than that? It's not just any horror movie. Uh, you got to pick it. Yeah. So it's true. I did get to pick it. Yeah. Did. Uh, do you you want to go ahead and lay it on everybody? What we're gonna be talking about tonight? Yeah, we're gonna be talking about. 2019's Candy Corn. It is one of my favorite indie horror films. I know okay. there's... If you look out in the uh, the horror verse, that people have opinions about this movie, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah and... And, I'm, and I'm going to tell you right now, uh, when you told us the name of the movie, I was in disgust, because <laughs> who the fuck likes Candy Corn? D- me. Dustin. You fucking, you fucking know it's me. <laughs> so gross. I don't, I don't hate man. it. I don't it's, hate it. Nah, if it's there, I'll eat it. Hard pass. I, you can I, have I, all I my think... candy. You guys can have all my candy corn. How about I that? I think there's a chocolate candy corn you might like. There is one that's chocolate flavored. Have you tried that? But it's. But is it candy corn? Yes, it's candy corn. Yeah. But it's chocolate. No, flavored. I'm not gonna try it. It's still <laughs> wax. Oh my god, it's, dude. It is still disgrace. Wax. Fucking disgrace. But anyways. Over here, man. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> It's all good. Oh, but, but uh, Brad, with this being your first time, yeah. man, do you want to go ahead and uh, let people know what you do over on Old Man Brad? Please, Old Man Brad. I I, uh, I also talk horror movies. I bring on indie horror filmmakers, and we chat sometimes. I bring guests, do reviews, all the fun things over there. I just have a blast. So hell yeah! And uh, Dustin, one of the Dustins, will be on the show soon. Big we'll get the D. other one on as yeah, well. Yeah, big D. And little D. Little <laughs> D's over there with the long hair. Hell yeah, dude. Well, but, Dustin, what movie did we do where we were like, let's look at the reviews. And we looked at the reviews, and the one that popped up was fucking Brad's. It was... The, was it body, uh, body Parts? It was Body, body Parts. parts. <laughs> it was Body yep. Parts. And that's what kind of like, we like spawned this whole interaction right now. Yeah. We were like... Wow, I'm like, read that shit live. <laughs> yeah, that episode when it was like, they, they found me live on the show. This is, this is happening. And... <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's, it's crazy because oh, um, we were looking at it and there wasn't like a ton of reviews. I think it was on IMDb or, or something. Yeah. And there was like barely any reviews. And for some reason, it was just like, wait a second. This is old man Brad right here. Like, what the fuck? Like, I, I know him. <laughs> Yeah, I always I always try to put all my reviews over on the IMDb because you you never know when someone's gonna find your stuff just like you guys did. Yeah, you know you what? never know. I was told that I should start doing that for my show, but I'm like I've done so many episodes, and for me to like go and backtrack mm-hmm. and add everything on there, I'm like this. It's insane. No way, man. Yeah, it'd be yeah, a hassle. Going forward. Yeah, maybe just going oh. forward. Maybe. Sure. I'll put that on um on Big D. I'll have him go. <laughs> I'll I'll write up some reviews for stuff we do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you do even more work for the other two shows that you're on. Yeah, that's a it's all good, man. It's all good. <laughs> it, it'll pay out at some point in in your life, I promise. Um, but yeah, I'm super stoked to have you here, Brad, and and for what you picked tonight. It's good to revisit this because, as I was telling you guys earlier before we started this, is I did see this when it dropped because um, Dread Central they were really promoting this mm-hmm. hard, and I get That's a lot of. Oh, go ahead. Epic Pictures and Dread, who I mean, their combination—they're the ones that released the film, so they were yeah, be you know pushing their own movie basically pretty hard. Yeah, and um. Also, I get fright rags a lot, and every time they send me stuff, and they they give like the little stickers or like the little like a um, movie quote mm-hmm. things, I would always have a candy corn sticker. And then I'm like, okay, so I need I need to watch this now because it, it came out. I watched it maybe like a month or two after it was out. I was like, okay, I'll sit down and watch it. And I haven't thought of it since, but I do remember yeah. my first time watching it, and then revisiting it. I'm like, oh, okay. I remember this. Um, there's definitely some things in here that I like. There's definitely some things in here I don't like. 
but um that's the yeah. the nature of watching movies and you know doing a podcast and really thinking about things critically sometimes but i'm super amped to have watched this again and to be here talking to you guys about it yeah this was a first time watch for me uh and i i had to make sure i took a picture of the screen and sent it to brad i'm like is this the one that i need to watch <laughs> so <laughs> Um, and I'm gonna echo, and I'm gonna echo Dustin. There's a, there's actually a lot that I liked about this movie. Um, there's very little though that I didn't like. You know, I was busting your balls earlier about shit that I didn't like, but uh, yeah, there's very very little, and I'm sure we're gonna touch on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then also I was just disgusted at the fact that the name of the movie was Candy Corn. <laughs> so it almost sets you on a bad path to begin with. You but could it, say it put a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> oh my god, get out of here, dude. Get out of here. So Yuck. for me, I saw this movie at Horror Hound here in Cincinnati in 2019 because the movie was filmed in Blanchester just outside of Cincinnati, about okay. 20-ish, 25 minutes outside of town. And so there was a big screening in Horror Hound, you know, he had friends, family, everything, and they, I was like, what is candy corn? Yeah, sure, why not? It's a Halloween movie. I'm going to go check this out. And immediately that night, like, I honestly, I fell in love with it because he's even, he, you know, I've got to talk to him and it was a love letter to movies that he loved growing up. You can see tons of influences. Oh, yeah. Oh, easy. But this has become since that night, it, at least a yearly watch for me. I watch it every October for the last years because it's, it's just a movie that I... I enjoy so much. I love, and I can see where people can have some issues with some things. I get it, but that's, that's the fun of movies. Exactly. Is I could love yeah. it. Someone else could hate it, but you know what? We can, we can still get along. Come on people. Oh, oh yeah. sure. Oh yeah. yeah. People can have disagreements it, and still get along. Art is yeah, subjective. It, ta- <laughs> it takes uh, no effort at all to not be an asshole about something that someone doesn't like, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Have a nice civil conversation about it and maybe hear the other side for once. And that, that goes yeah. for a lot of other things outside of movies. Yeah, like maybe you guys had a di- apart. Maybe you guys had a different perspective than I did. Maybe you mm-hmm. interpreted something differently, you know? Then it's just I don't know, we'll find out if I throw my pen up in the air and I'm like, that's it, I'm done. That's it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> um, so, go ahead, Dustin. No, you want to kick I it off? Gonna, I was just going to say, um, I guess we'll just kind of do around the table here and kind of pick on some parts that we uh, we want to highlight and kind of discuss it together. Um, Brad, since you're the guest today, um, I'll leave it up to you. Whatever you want to start from, whatever you want to talk about, the floor is yours, man. Um. The big thing I want to talk about, I I mentioned that it is a love letter to, you know, the old like Halloween and many other films that Josh Hasty, the director, writer and director, he grew up with. So he just that's kind of what this was, is a a love letter to that. Mm -hmm. And with that, he created this character, Dr. Death, who is a carny and kind of has this this shtick with everything and and poncho moeller i think i've seen him in other movies but this i think is his best role that he's done compared was he to in some 31 of the stuff yes oh, okay yeah, okay that's what I, yeah. that's what i was gonna okay well and josh hasty did work on uh 31 with rob zombie he yeah. did a documentary hmm, that okay. was part of it so he does have that connection i that's where they met but i i, I love the dr death character I love just some of the mannerisms he does, like with his jaw when he shakes it side to side when he's talking to um, Courtney Gaines, sheriff character, mm-hmm. and this just as I don't want to say a lead up, but just kind of how things kind of fall into place with everything. I, I would love to see this series continue with more Dr. Death in different cities with different almost an anthology series he, it could be a different story every time it do, doesn't have to be a revenge story every time yeah. there's something else coming out of his book or case or whatever he has and his repertoire yeah yeah that's that's how i took it is i took it like this isn't the first time he's done this oh hell no you know and it's no. like 
he and that's how I felt is like each city that he he's about to leave something fucking happens and that's his like I don't say literally kiss of death but it's like he does this solid for this person and then brings him with them because to me like was the character the uh, the kid who played uh the monster J- like Jacob uh Nate uh, yeah Nate who played Jacob did he die eventually? Like, is that what was happening at the theater? Like, was he like, is his torture is done? That's why he like passed out or whatever, or was he just weakening? Or I didn't understand. He didn't have enough why... blood from what they were kind of yeah. saying. Like, he needed to feed essentially. Like, they oh, have to feed him. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Which makes um, sense. I I dug the creature design. Like his mask. I really liked that. Yeah. Uh, his little fucking tote. <laughs> the the jack o' lantern tote was really cool. Yep. Um, With his candy corn and bleh, whatever else inside. Yeah, and teeth and human teeth or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but no, I did like the Doctor Death character a lot, and I like the fact that we never seen him without the makeup. You know, like that was mm. a good, a nice touch to it, and it's, it's just that's what you know identified the character. And then we got to see Tony Todd. And Tony Todd's, you know, he's very reined in. And it's weird seeing him like that, you know? Like, it's it's weird not seeing him being a thespian <laughs> and acting his ass off. He's just this guy that's fucking there, dude. And not until now, and I should have known that I didn't realize the receptionist at the sheriff's department was PJ's hold. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So also I'm like, a call back to Halloween, you know? Yeah, yeah. man. So... Uh, yeah, no, the, I agree with you, man. I really, I want to see more of what Dr. Death's book, the, the not Necronomicon holds. Yeah. I mean, even you said Tony Todd, you could just tell that other things have happened because he's just the way he interacts with them. Like, it's almost like, oh, it, this is happening again. Again, exactly. To clean up. Yeah. 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 No, I I definitely thought that that character was really cool, and he he had like a little bit of a side to him that was very ominous. Even though you you know what his intentions are, um, pretty much mm-hmm. not like right out of the gate, but like after a couple scenes you, when you're with him, and then you see what happens to uh, to Jacob, and he's like, oh fuck, I guess I have to do this now. Like part of him seemed like he didn't want to do what he was doing, but he's like, mm-hmm. I I kind of have to because these people deserve what happened it, you know this movie is a classic case of bullies beating up somebody who's who they think is less than them or because they're different or or strange which i think we can all kind of relate some point in our life that we had like an mm-hmm. altercation with assholes like this um hopefully not to the extent that this kid <laughs> goes through yeah right <laughs> but um yeah the whole like lead up to that and him having this choice to be like i'm gonna bring him back because yeah the kid died um spoiler alert there's gonna be a lot of spoilers in here (laughs) and he was on the clock i mean yeah he he was killed on the clock so yeah i feel like that's an an insurance thing yeah (laughs) literally (laughs) um but yeah i thought the the creature design was really cool i dug the mask i'd love to have that over here with with my masks yeah um it almost looked like and and this kind of goes back to like when we were talking to uh, the creeping death guys like like a michael myers mask like altered is what it looked like to me just like more mm-hmm. like ripped up from the uh from the teeth and whatnot but mm-hmm. also making it obviously look like a, a pumpkin because <laughs> you know it's very fitting yeah. with the mood being in fall and whatnot which this movie has a very strong fall presence which i oh, love put me in right movies. in the mood hell yeah so yeah. um yeah there's just, there's a lot of good things about this film and there's some things i have gripes with but i'll, I'll get to that later um we'll just kind of keep going around to other things that we uh we want to highlight so keep moving it around so brad i guess uh back to you or dustin whoever wants to go the the other thing that i i love is it it goes back to the callback is the 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 soundtrack because it's very it's very Halloween esque, very yeah. 80s synth of that time. And it, it just, it sets that tone. You're in the fall, you hear that music, the leaves are falling, and it just, everything you, you, you get in the mood. And you're just like, oh, yeah, this is a Halloween movie. This is, this is a movie I have to watch during this time of the year. It's just perfect. Sure. And I, I actually own the soundtrack on vinyl, and it's, 
Oh, Fantastic. hell yeah, dude. Oh, that's awesome, man. And, and you're right. Like, you know, same thing like with Christmas movies. When you hear Christmas yeah. songs or <laughs> oh, yeah. a, the different type of score you feel in that mood, and this movie mm -hmm. definitely does it. Uh, what I was thinking is there's a part in this movie where Dr. Death ends up visiting uh, Courtney Gaines' house, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, where he's sitting and in the chair? Sitting in the chair, kicking his feet, you know, yep. loved it. I loved it. That, I that thought, whole little monologue that he did was just he, awesome. it, it just spot on. I thought the mask that was put on this kid Nate was a ma was a face that he cut off from somebody in a different town. So I thought what was happening is when he cut off the cut the sheriff's face, he was essentially replacing the one he just used at huh. that point. When he and I was like, him into oh, a, a hood order, right? a lantern, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that's what I thought was happening, man. And I'm just going to throw mine on the table now, man. My big gripe. Go ahead. And it's not even yeah. a big gripe. It's I think the wrong person lasted the longest. <laughs> and with the okay. sheriff's son being the last person. Yeah. He should have been first. Like he should have been for, or I mean, Gus, Gus was my fucking boy, dude. Like I, <laughs> oh my God, dude. I love this sleaze ball. When I seen him on the screen, I was like, yes, you he are like, hell oh, yeah, man, dude. And he has that daydream when he's in the bathroom, <laughs> dude. It's so oh, yeah. fucking good. But I think the sheriff's son lasted too long. Uh, and it should. And at the same time, I feel like it being cliche, like the girl who had nothing to do with it almost got the most brutal kill out of everyone. I thought the same thing, honestly. I think she should have just, did like, you... not have been harmed, in my opinion. But I get did... she's the one that's, I'd say, snitched. She did the one that was talking. That's I feel like that's why her tongue was ripped out. Yeah, did, did you notice, like, the kills? Hers, her tongue was ripped out because she wouldn't speak up. The one kid, basically... Uh, who got his spine ripped out? It's because he was like the weakest one and didn't like stand up for anything. Yeah, he had and, no spine. Uh, the other guy got like e ears ripped off because he wouldn't listen to his girlfriend or anything else. So that's kind of how hmm. they died. Was kind of how they acted. The, yeah, the one guy I don't know why I didn't catch on. on. I didn't catch on to any of that. I was just in, yeah. I was just watching. Like, I, oh, that's cool. <laughs> no, I put the two and two together with the girlfriend getting her tongue ripped out. Cause I'm like, that's probably because she went and said something to the cops. Not the fact that she didn't say anything after that. So that just makes plenty sense. Hmm. Uh, that's pretty. That's actually pretty neat to know that. But uh, that's that's my only gripe, to be honest, man. I love the carnival setting. Like I love the physical setting of this place. Mm -hmm. mm. It's awesome. Um, seeing well, there's not very many people there really, no. but I feel like, no, I don't know, but I feel like the carnival, I, I, it's, it's, it's last nights, but I also feel like it's one of those things that people True. don't go and do, but there's also a curfew, you know? So there's a lot, there are a lot of factors playing against the fact that this, uh, this carnival was dead essentially, you know, but it was also mm -hmm. packing up. That's, that's just how I took it. Yeah. Um, all right. I guess I'll get to what what bothered me. Um, going back to the music, I I enjoyed the score of this like mm -hmm. a lot. I thought it was it was really good. But the one thing is they really like dug into seeing these bullies get killed and really wanted you to feel really bad that they died. Like the score got wicked sad. Like all right. Now you need to feel bad and sad that that these people who killed this boy are now dead. And I was just like, I don't know if that's a choice I would have made for it, but I understand because <laughs> like you're yep. focusing on these characters and they're the ones that the movie's really like built upon. And you have this guy who's now out killing people because they they killed him. Um, I just thought. I wasn't vibing with that too much. And that's like my, my one big thing that I was like, maybe the score could have been a little bit, a little bit lighter, not, not so heavy on like, okay, now you need to be really sad <laughs> that these guys died. Like when Gus died, that first score that like popped in, I was like, wow, this is really sad. <laughs> I'm like, I like the character, but I was just like, I don't know if it needed to be, needed to be that hard on, of you feeling bad. I can see that. How was he killed again? Like, I know it was in the bathroom, but what happened to Gus? He, like, 
didn't he like put his ha- hand up into his chest? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. he. Yeah. Something he rip like his that. heart out. Yeah. I I should know this. I've seen this movie probably about ten times. But yeah, yeah. I think it was something to do with. Um... <laughs> I should know by now. Yeah, it was definitely that because before that he was trying to um, have. Well, no, I think he did have sex with that girl, right? Oh, that was it. That was, wasn't. He was no, loving he was, himself. He was thinking about oh, it while he was right. pranking, pranking it in the daydream. fucking bathroom. You're right. You're right. Dude, I can't have five minutes to myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, but I, I wondered. What, I wondered like what was symbolic about his then at that point. If if everything else kind of had like a reason, he was talking you know, out of his like, ass, man. So he just shoved his hand right up his fucking ass? <laughs> yeah. Remember the guy? He was just like, whoa, Gus, you're so cool. I was like, yeah, there's a lot of asses. A lot of them were slapping. A lot of them were poked. <laughs> <laughs> dude. Oh, my God. Gus was the man, dude. Like, he just, I, as soon as I seen him, I'm like, I vibe with this guy. Like, he just looks <laughs> fucking sleazy. He's there for the good time. And then that's, I don't know, maybe he was the setup for the kill. Now he's the setup for the murders. I don't know. Yeah. But... But yeah, he, he was played by Sky Elobar. Have you ever seen Is he jumping around for you too? Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, there we go. Get my yeah, back. There we go. You're back. All right. Sky no. Sky Elobar, the greasy strangler. Have you ever seen that film? I have no, not. I it's heard been on my plenty. watch list. I just got into it. about the uh, greasy strangler. It's interesting. I'll just say that, and we'll just leave it there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll hard pass on that shit. <laughs> but he's he 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 plays this. I don't want to say almost the same kind of character, but kind of sure. quirkiness, so very similar. Sure. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm trying to think of what other like spots in here that I really enjoyed. Um, did did you uh, have an issue with you know the age of the the people who did this? Like you know the no leader of the gang was you know thirty ish years old compared to everybody else. <laughs> no, and no. it's that's a I, that didn't bother me at all. But it was just okay. like one of those things where it was like, yeah, we've been doing this shit since we were kids, yeah. you know. And first and foremost, if you've been doing that shit since you were kids, uh, that's going to get old really quick. Or, like, this kid, Nate, should have learned how to fight back, essentially. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. slap Absolutely. slap them around one day. And the one time he did, he gets fucking killed, you know? Yeah, literally. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I didn't have a problem with the age of the cast. Um, and like I said, my only real problem was the... Uh, the wrong person survived longer, you know, and that's really it. Everything else was, you know, pretty brutal, which I really dug the practicals. I've already talked about, I love the sets. Like I, it's, I like the fact that it was a location, you know, yeah. like that's like the carnival is almost a character in itself, mm-hmm. you know? And I really like that. Um, but no, like, I really feel like, you know, I, I out of which, of the kids, who do you think got it the worst? Hmm. I want to say the girl. Like, yeah, we we had like that the leader of the group got his arms ripped off and then his teeth pulled out. Which honestly, if you got your arms <laughs> ripped out, I don't think you're gonna still be alive to get your teeth ripped out. <laughs> but um, no, I I think um, uh, Carol, I, like just feeling or trying to like feel like what would it be like to get your tongue ripped out? That just that's insane to me. Insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Brad? I mean, yes, her or even the the one kid who just slowly got his spine ripped out. Oh, of him, yeah. Dude. I mean, that's good too. Because the buildup is, you can just tell that he's just digging his hands in there. He's like, and then he just like rips it. Mm-hmm. The World CGI Kombat blood. Style. Obviously, you can tell the CGI blood, but talking to the director they had to go that route because the house they were filming in and the theater they couldn't have blood everywhere so they couldn't yeah. make a mess so they well, had to make sense you had yeah. to cut corners i mean yeah i mean and it didn't even look awful i mean no, on top all. of everything else that's there you know it's like yeah i have i have enough pros for that one con to be outweighed 
You know, like that's how I looked at it. I, I didn't. I paused. I honestly didn't care. And having um, Chet be the last one, or not Chet, uh... dickhead. Yeah, <laughs> dickhead. <laughs> Can I think of his name now? <laughs> dickhead. Chet. Chet was the uh, the uh, other guy in the. Uh... Uh, Steve was the friend. So was it Bobby? Bobby, Mike, and Jacob, and Steve. Are the, but uh, the him guys. being the last one. I think, I mean, it kind of set that up because he was the ringleader. He was the leader. You, you Symbolic, kind of built sure. up that he's, he's done this for a while and to finally like get him. That, yeah. I think that's why his kill was kind of like a, a twofer of like, okay, we're going to rip your arms out. Now we're going to pull your teeth out, put them in a bucket. Yeah. Because and make, make a necklace, necklace out, out of it. it. And show yeah. a girl like months later. <laughs> yeah. And that. Uh, I, I think the cops kill, like the cop getting killed was because he wasn't even oh. dead. Like he wasn't oh, dead when he yeah. cut his face off. I'm like, fuck. All right. Yeah, man. Just knocked out. <laughs> that's, just knocked out. That's yeah. brutal. Yeah. Just imagine waking up with no face. <laughs> <laughs> um, what the fuck? <laughs> but I'm um, going towards like what you were saying earlier, Dustin, about you wanting to see um, other parts. Like the end of this movie kind of led up to. Dr. Death kind of doing this again, like bringing in that girl yeah. at the very, very end and being like, come, come with us. We know you're an outcast and like, we know the other crazy thing is going to happen. So the door is open. So let's see if it happens. Yeah. I wonder like all of the stuff that he has in there. So he said has the story and I wonder it'd be cool to get those stories. Yeah. Yeah. Like a mini like, TV it. series would be cool too. Hell yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Make, yeah, make you, it, like I said, make it an anthology where it doesn't have to be the same type of thing every time. You don't have to have a revenge or whatever the creature he brings back is. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, one thing um, that I was thinking about watching this is trying to figure out if I was satisfied with the amount of screen time that Jacob had as the, the ghoul, I'll call him. How do, how do you guys feel about that? Do you think you were, you were satisfied with the amount of screen time he was there, or would you want to see him more? I wouldn't no. mind to see him more, but I think his screen time was adequate, I felt. Yeah, I feel like if we had gotten him more, it would have kind of like taken away. We'd be able to see him and pick at it more like the flaws mm. and shit. If okay. there were any, you know, but I, I feel like less is better. Yeah, I was feeling the same way. I was like, I, I kind of like that they were toying around with um, talking about him more as he's out there and not showing him do these things and just mm -hmm. have him there on these moments where, okay, you're going to die now. And not seeing um what was it steve's kill we didn't really see that happen because we really wanted the hard hitting um punch of the tongue rip which i thought was really really cool i love that whole theater scene i thought that was great yeah. them watching watching it in the theater behind the screen and then they go up front and then you see the cops in there flashing the lights i thought the whole like cinematography and that whole part was beautifully done if he had stepped on that tongue and fucking slipped like a banana peel. That would have been great. That <laughs> would have been great. That would have been great, dude. I think, but, I think that was a different style of movie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Break the tension for something that serious, yeah. <laughs> Horror yeah. comedy. <laughs> oh, yeah. But no, I... All in all, man, I... actually enjoyed it. It was a breezy watch. It was being a, under an hour and a half. Yeah. You know, like it was, it flew by and I didn't like the runtime. There's no complaining. Uh, it, it built the world and told the story uh, appropriately, man. And I, I really liked it. Same. I dug it. Thanks, so, Brad. Dustin, <laughs> the first time you watched it, how did you feel about these? So this is a revisit years later. Um, I remember um, liking it. I think this time as a second watch, I liked it a lot more because, um, you know, when you watch something the first time, you miss a lot mm -hmm. of the things. And it, with it being a, such a big gap since I saw it the first time and seeing it this time, I was like, OK, I remember this happening. But I'm like, oh, all right, there's a cool little detail right there. Or being like, oh, I didn't really pay attention to this kill or the setup of what was happening before. But um, this time around, I enjoyed it hell of a lot more and i'm definitely adding this to my watch list 
for every uh every fall now because i wasn't doing it previously but now it's there now you gotta grab the blu-ray and add it to the collection. yeah honestly i'm yeah. gonna have to <laughs> are there any cool features on it uh there is some behind the scenes like making of stuff that is pretty cool cool just kind of seeing them oh, yeah. setting up shots and days and i've tried to because i'm not i'm probably like 15 ish minutes or so from blanchester i've driven out there to see if i could find some of the places but it was like a quick we went through town and i didn't see anything i want i want to go and like find like the uh you know the white exteriors that they park in and those buildings and stuff okay. time to make a youtube oh, video yeah. people will be watching that <laughs> yep yeah I just so need Dustin, that kind of stuff, especially if it's close. Like, yeah, you know, sure. Frogman Two films out here. I'll be. There. I was about to say you, you got this carnival. Now you got the frog. Yeah, Frogman. So just Brad's the trifecta. Honestly. <laughs> so Dustin, I know you're new to Letterbox. Uh, did you happen to rate this movie? Um, I did. Um, I did enjoy this, but I gave it a three point five out of five. Um, that's fair you know it, it's an indie film so i don't try to knock um indie films too hard because i know how much there is to go into making these films and when you're trying to make a passion project come to life and you know have the whole world see it there's going to be some flaws and we've learned a lot of that from watching creeping death and talking to the the crew over there um there's a lot that can be expanded upon on this um whether if they want to do like an anthology thing that we're talking about or anything like that or a prequel whatever they want to do um but i thought the film was really really fun and give it a shot if you haven't watched it yeah brad what about you man well it, this is i've rated it a solid four out of five and okay. it's it's I mean, it's a great movie. I watch it every year. And just like you said, like I've talked to the director. Uh, I did a screening with him and Nate. Uh, we're at a screening here in Cincinnati we, that I hosted. And same thing, just getting to talk to him and learn like struggles of making of the movie just mm -hmm. kind of elevate some of it a little bit. Because you're like, oh, yeah, cool. Because it took him many years to get this movie made due to like funding and and different story different things along the way so it's always wow. just cool hearing that and you're like oh i appreciate yeah. your movie even more after hearing this yeah of course <laughs> of course um i rated it a solid 3.5 as well oh awesome. uh I, I did enjoy it i did like the halloween vibes it brought uh put me again you know so far we're two for two for the uh the season movies we've been watching where it's like it just puts me right in the mood for the Burrs month, you know, and <laughs> I'm uh I'm not mad I watched it, you know, no, so I had a ton either. of I had fun with it. Yeah. I yeah. mean between creeping death and this, like you should have the full fall feels all over the place. Oh my god, yep. yes. It's gonna be oh, a back exactly. to back. These this is a good double feature, honestly. Yeah. For, like there you go, people. When, yeah, you uh, heard it here first. <laughs> when Creeping Death drops on the screen box on September 10th, watch that and then watch this on Tubi or vice versa, wherever you guys want, because it's going to be a, a great double feature. Yeah. And uh, Brad, Brad, you got I mean... anything? Uh... Oh, go, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I would say, Brad, do you have anything you want to touch on before we uh, get out of here? Um, I don't think so. I'm glad I could bring this movie to you. I think I've I've brought this movie to multiple podcasts. Just because I love this movie. I absolutely do love this movie. And I know there are people that aren't huge fans of it. I get it. That's fine. Everybody can love movies. Everybody can hate different movies. It's fine. But it's just one of those films, like you've said multiple times, that hits that fall season. It hits the right notes for me. And it's just every time I watch it, I enjoy the hell out of it. So, Hell yeah. Well, thank you, Brad, for, you know, being here, for introducing this to me no. I, I, for the second time of me seeing it and <laughs> for Dustin, the uh, the first time for him. Um, it's on Tubi, and uh, I think you can also get it on Amazon, but um, definitely watch it on Tubi if you can, because um, Tubi's is great. I'm excited that you guys liked it. I'm like, yay. Yeah. yeah. Go buy <laughs> yeah, a copy yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have yeah, to stag myself a copy yeah. as well. Um, but so this... this is... Oh, go ahead. I say this is the only thing with candy corn that I would say that I liked. 
Dude, you're going to get it, and it's just going to be a bunch of candy corn inside. It's not even going to be I'd the be, DVD. I'd be so mad. I'd be so <laughs> mad. Or you, Anyone you sc- listening should ship Dustin various flavors of candy corn. Yes, 100%. Get a P.O. box, and I'll send you some. Yeah, I'll do a live tasting. Oh, dude, I'll do it with you. <laughs> I'll, we'll, I'll go to the store and buy some. You tell me what's happening. We'll do a video on that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Let's do it, man. <laughs> oh, Brad, where can everyone find you at, man? Uh, just look for, for Old Man Brad. I'm everywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh, over on social media, it's either Old Man Brad or Old Man Brad Pod. My main is To Be Tuesday because I do a ton of things to be related. So you can find me there as well. But yeah. Just look for old man Brad. I'm out there. there oh, yeah. Go. Well, thank you for joining us, man. And um, Dustin, no, it's always... thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be having you back on again. Um... You can never escape me, Brad. <laughs> Honestly. That's all right. Uh, That's all right. Dustin, it's always great having you on here. No. Oh, yeah. I, I can't, like, fathom... Um, what it was like a couple months ago, like not having a, a co-host and having to do all this stuff by myself and now being here and feeling the energy and how alive the show feels now. I, I thank you a lot for, you know, wanting to do this with me and bringing people like Brad on to, you know, give a little bit more life to the show as well. It's, it's been so great and I hope everybody's enjoying the new show and how everything has been going. Cause there's a lot of cool stuff in the pipeline. So solo can be tough. I know. Yeah. <laughs> really really can yeah. we're, uh, we're only getting started man hell yeah but um, thank you guys so much for being here and listening to this and let us know down below what you think of Candy Corn have you seen it do you want to see it has it been on your watch disgusting? list no go ahead and put it down below and um, <laughs> make sure you also <laughs> rate and share and follow the podcast wherever you listen to it whether it's on Spotify Apple YouTube if you like uh, video formats we're on Patreon the works so thank you guys so much for being here and for listening to the show and we'll see you next time later